well, we'll take it. Um, you know, we're never going to give a give a win back. It wasn't our best game, I didn't think. Um, but we did enough to pull ahead there. Um, credit to our guys kind of sticking with it. It got a little frustrating there where we felt like we stranded the bases loaded so many times. Uh, left a lot of runners on base. Uh, but... You know, we also drew 10 walks, and that was kind of going into the today. We knew we were facing a really good arm, kid with a you know plus fastball, and he did a good job of landing his breaking ball early, and just you know just had us off balance. It looked like, uh, and it was a really offensive day. Five solo home runs hit between both teams. You know, but the ability to draw walks and get on base and just do enough offensively to to separate there. Um, was the difference? I thought we we pitched very well. Again, wasn't our wasn't our best pitching and defensive performance, but we just did enough. We did enough to win, and that um, and that was good to see our guys kind of stick with it, not get frustrated, and just keep having quality at bats, keep finding their way on base. So we ended up with you know ten hits, ten walks, a hit by pitch, uh, and ended up with eight runs, which is a a decent amount of runs, but it just felt like one of those games where we could have really blown it open. Um, so that's just not the way, not the way it worked out. But uh, you know, Tristan Smith uh, settled in. He's got a little rocky there in the first inning, but did a good job of of settling in. And he's got a premium fastball and gets a lot of swing and miss on his fastball. And when he, you know, his his first, I think. 10 or 15 pitches, wasn't throwing very many strikes, but then did a much better job as the as the outing went along, throwing a lot more strikes. And uh, for a guy like him, he's got the stuff. So when he's in the zone, he's tough to hit. And then Nick Clayton came out and did his thing, and and Lucas Malstad did it did a nice job as well, getting double plays. Uh, Jacob Hinderleiter played great defense at third base. That backhand short hop pick and the, the early in the game saved some runs. Had a two-run double himself, but uh, all in all, I, you know, it was, it was it was just a you know it was just, just a a decent game. Not you know we didn't play poorly, we didn't play great, we, but we just did enough to win and we're able to separate a little bit. Uh, so I'd like to see us do a better job with runners on base tomorrow and and uh, give ourselves a chance for more big innings. But we'll certainly take it uh, and look to play our best baseball tomorrow. And it should be a good matchup. But again, that's a very good team. Question for players. Jacob, how good did it feel to make your first start here today at Clemson and uh, post your first two hits and a couple of rubies? Yeah, it felt really good. Um, I'm just really excited to be here and grateful to be a part of this program and excited to keep going. I don't know what the crowd was like there at Davidson, but uh, it must have been pretty neat to play in front of a big crowd like this. Yeah, it's been awesome. The community here is amazing. Uh, it's a little bit different of an atmosphere, but uh, it's, it's definitely awesome to play in front of these fans. Tristan, what was working well for you on the mound today? Um, the fastball command uh, first inning was a little rocky, and then I just stuck with it and uh, trusted my guys behind me and know they're going to make some plays for me. So, when the, when the wind's blowing out like it was to left today, I mean, does, does that impact you at all and your strategy on the mound? I mean, do you try to pitch with, try to work the left side of the plate? Um, we started to at the um, probably around the second inning, but it was just more trusting myself and trusting my stuff. So. What are you guys telling each other in the dugout when you're not hitting those hits with runners in scoring position? How do you stay in the game? Yeah, I mean, just just keep at it. Keep trying to compete as well as you can and do what you can to contribute for the team and not let you know missed opportunities take away from the next ones that you know you're going to get. So it's just keeping your foot on the pedal and just keep competing. Tristan, what was the biggest thing you worked on in the offseason to try to take your, your game to the next level? Um, it was more of... Uh, just working, working my two other pitches, my changeup and my slider. So I've been, uh, I still have a lot to improve, but um, just as the season goes on, I'm, I'm gonna keep on getting better and keep on working and trusting, trusting the guys behind me. So, yes, sir. Any other questions for the players? Right, thank you, players. Thanks, guys. Yeah, another shout out to the to the DKS crowd. Another crowd of five thousand uh, plus. So that's it's huge. It, it uh, you know getting them in, engaged and getting them into it. And, you know the, the 
just to, in sync that synergy with whatever's on the you know on the uh, video board I think we saw the heat is on for bases loaded like nine times <laughs> today just could never quite you know get that big bases clearing uh, but the crowd is there and they they help us it's such a such a huge help so uh, really appreciate everybody coming out coach when not rocky is hitting like he is um, I, I guess you just leave him in the nine hole right <laughs> don't mess with it he's doing a good job that was a you know he he could have played last year it would just been one of those uh, you know maybe sparingly behind that older in, infield that we had so we decided you know not to burn a, a year on, on limited opportunities and he had just worked extremely hard uh, every day just committed to getting better, whether it's the weight room, nutrition, hydration, cold plunges, researching some new scientific thing to improve his body, and just the, the daily commitment of just investing the time. I mean, he's the perfect example of hard work pays off. It takes what it takes. There's nothing, you know, it's just, he's just one of those dirty hard work Committed to the process, so he went out, had a great summer, was an all-star in the NECPL from Lampers Vineyard, and you know it's good to see him having success here because he's an incredibly hard worker. Any update on Gerald? He just pulled a uh, like a almost soreness, so we weren't sure if it was a muscle pull or if it was soreness. So I was thinking it was like a pulled muscle in his back, but it's just it's just a, a lot of soreness. He and he and Nolan are like. You know they're like best buds, two peas in a pod, and they you know they probably both work so hard they you know they kind of border on hey you guys need to take it easy a little bit and just, you know not lift as many weights and do as many extra things. Um, so I think maybe it's just you know just getting a little bit of treatment, getting a little bit of rest, and we just told them hey let's not make a one day thing turn into a one month thing. Uh, so just he he was he could have played, but we just decided not to. I, I guess it'd be another. We're talking about Jacob, um, you coach Jimmy uh, at Michigan. Um, he had the one bad throw to second today, but otherwise, how do you, uh, what do you think about the game he caught? I thought he did fine. I thought he did, you know, he's a good catcher. JJ's a good catcher too. I feel like we have two really good catchers that would be, you know, premium guys on anyone's team. So that that's a luxury item for us to have two guys that you trust, and you know, there's really not any any type of a, a drop off. They both can do it at a very high level. They both can do it at the next level. So it's, uh, it's, it's good to have. And uh, Jimmy was able to easily slide back there, no problem. And yeah, the one, the low throw, I mean, you know, if, if you're gonna miss, you wanna miss low, at least give the fielder a chance. Um, but that was on a delayed steal, you know, and credit to them for, you know, having the courage to run a delayed steal. It's, it's a tough play to run, because it's, you know, you got a lot has to go right, and you have to catch the defense off guard. And, but we were ready for it, and we were at the base. We just missed the throw, or the throw was too low. But yeah, Jimmy, I thought caught a good game and um, facing some guys with good stuff. Obviously, with Tristan and Clayton and Malstep, those are three three really good pitchers whose balls all do different things. Um, so really, really good job. Coach, base running was a big part of your offense last season. Uh, where do you think your uh, base running game stands this this year compared to last? I think it'll end up being about the same. They're just doing a really good job of holding. You know, they pick like all the time at first base. They pick, pick, pick all, you know, it's nonstop picks. That's tough. Um, and then at second, they're very quick to the plate. They know we like to steal. Obviously Riley's over there. So he's, you know, giving away all the trade secrets. Um, but they're just doing a really good job of holding our offense. And we kind of knew that. We knew that all the things maybe we, we'll, typically do um, you know this is a team that's very well coached even without Riley there that's a very well coached team um, and they do a good job of holding the run game and uh, they've got a catcher who can really throw and he's he's tried to back pick a few times now on the bases so he's a gunslinger back there their pitchers are all quick to the plate and that's what I mean by having a balanced offense you know just have to be able to be a run scoring offense that can score in multiple ways so we may not be able to steal bases against Xavier but that doesn't mean we won't use it against somebody else um, so we've been you know we've been swinging the bats pretty well um, showing the, the power that we have uh, but we've got to also execute with runners in scoring position I think no matter who we play that's just got to be a staple
It's nice to be able to steal a run on a pick, though, at least. <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> Coach, uh, Nick Clayton, you know, gave up the two homers, but otherwise pitched pretty well. Um, what do you think he's done in the offseason to kind of take that next step? He had a great season out of the pen last year. Yeah, well, he's, you know, he's built up. So he's built up to go three innings like he did today. That was, did not stress him. He's, he's you know, can, and he was able to do that last year too, but maybe not hovering around 88, 90 miles an hour like he was. So he's added some strength, some velo. He's got the durability, so he can do that. He can be a long inning type, or a, um, yeah, he can go multiple innings in the game uh, and do a little more long relief than short relief. He's one of those guys who can go in in the game in the sixth and finish it. Um, but I thought he did a really good job. You know, the, the wind was blowing yesterday, or today like it was yesterday. Maybe he gives up no home runs. Um, but, um, and then maybe we don't hit him or hit them either, but it was, just an offensive day, but I didn't think they were bad pitches. I thought the more the hitters did a good job working underneath the ball. Anything else to say? Cool. Thanks, guys. <laughs>